Welcome everybody, Crypto Before Dark Wednesday, no time to waste. Just like the thumbnail says, FMOC raised it 4.75%, a quarter percent more on interest rates. And look at the chart react. This is a five minute chart. Yes, it's only a five minute chart, but I wanted to be able to see the data live. Volatility like you wouldn't believe. Um, kind of saw this coming about 45 minutes ago, pre-market, when everything started to show a little bit of signs of reversal. That's 45 minutes before the news. You started seeing this happen live. Um, so what do I make of this right off the bat? First thing I know, uh, first thing I get of it is Fed kind of realizes they're destroying the economy by continuing to raise rates past the point where people won't be able to use credit anymore. While that's good for banks, it's bad for everybody else. Also, it pushes us a little closer to the recession every time they jack the rates up. So he's trying to balance. Do I raise the rates? Do I keep the rates flat? Do I raise them too much? What do I do, right? This playing a bit of spitball here. He's throwing stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks. Quarter percent, what do I expect here? I expect this volatility to keep up for the next bit here. And then I expect everything to balance back out like it was to begin with. Everything is kind of already priced in beforehand. We kind of see this stuff coming. We've been talking about what charts may do for a long time. So again, not something I'm particularly excuse me, particularly freaked out by. But good to see everybody. Professor Keith, regular Keith, Keith, I can't stand Keith. What a hater Keith is, don't like him, blah, blah, blah. Good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Obviously, we're going to talk a little bit about the FOMC, talk about what it means, how it works, what it does. If you haven't done so, 786unlimited.com. Jump over there. I've got three offers for you, folks. Thrace, they're all three below in the description of the video. You can pay with crypto, you can do a card, or you can do yearly and save a little bit of money yearly gets you a free consult paying for the month to get you one free month crypto gets you in for ten dollars a month ten dollars a month is almost half off it's 40 percent off folks 40 percent off it's info that lasts you a lifetime go check it out now fomc stands for federal open market committee all right basically they decide what things look like, why they look the way they look, et cetera, et cetera. And they base rates of interest for loans on how the economy looks, and they decide whether we should raise the rates or lower the rates. For years, they've been lowering the rates and lowering the rates, trying to spurn business. What happened is a lot of people took, took advantage of that, and they were able to get homes, cars, and other things on very, very low credit. That's changed. In case you haven't noticed, interest rates for homes have doubled, doubled over the last few months, doubled. So what was a $300 house payment is now a $450 house payment at the minimum. So this costs you more every single day, not to mention inflation outrageous. They're trying their best to try to curb inflation by continuing to raise rates, which brings in more money for bigger people, which they invest. The problem is that hurts the low and middle class because we already didn't have the money to spend to begin with. It takes a little bit more money out of your pocket every day. So you have to find this happy median. And you can tell Powell is attempting to find this happy median by doing so. I saw a really interesting stat the other day. Uh, I want to say, oh gosh, I forget who sent it. But you know, inflation at 9%. Standard salary increases were less than 5 across the board. Inflation was twice what your salary went up. Inflation cost you more than what you made in a pay raise. You needed a 10% pay raise just to be able to cover the inflation that you took on all of your assets. That sucks, doesn't it? I agree it does. So if you haven't done so, please go hit like. Oops, wrong button. Please, my bad. Go hit like. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the more likes we get, the more YouTube will push us up the algorithm. The more people will see stuff and take a second to learn and listen. Go hit the subscribe button while you're there. Go hit uh, the notification bell as well so you don't miss any of these live streams. I started this one one minute early because I wanted to see what was happening. Um, but nonetheless, this is what FOMC means. Like button. Like button. 52 people on here, 21 likes. 
they're free, y'all. Let's go say hey to everybody. All right, what's up? Wait, what? He says, I'm first. Damn right. That's awesome, bro. Knox, good to see you. Uh, Mr. Vault, good evening, Mr. Keith, Professor Keith. Please check SAP. Okay, let me write that down. SAP. Oh, my pen doesn't work. There we go. All right. Uh, Ron Poteet, good to see you, brother. Ozone, what's up? Good to see you. Nico7, yes. Yes to you, sir. David Shirley, don't call me Shirley. Another one. <laughs> That's pretty good. MM Josh, what's up? D Kent 990H. Second live stream I was able to catch. How you doing? Bro, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> Quigs the vicious. I need to see Keith show me a retrace before I before giving my like. <laughs> All right. Uh Crew Jones, good to see you, brother. Architecture, what's up? Here I'm Claytor. Good to see you, Brandon P. Existence. Good to see you. Silent Sandal, Paulo, Manalo, Lunatic Prophet. All right. Where do we go from here? Well, I want to pull some low time frame fibs real quick. I was looking this over before we started. All right, so we're dancing around on the 50 fib right now, low time frame. What significance does that have? And as you see, we're under the 821 and struggling to get back over. We're kind of flatlining around where we were before any of this news dropped. Yeah. Now, at 2.30, he's going to start talking on the microphone, and people are going to try to trade that as well. This is what degenerates do. They jump on there and they try to trade news. They always lose. Because you always lose when you try trading the news. You might win short term, but you will lose long term because the market's already knowing what they're going to do beforehand. You're behind. You were 45 minutes late on a potential scalp here, by the way. Scalping started about 45 minutes before the news came out. So we're flooding around on this 50 fib. What do we need to see a break and hold to look better? I need to see 23,125 break and hold for a couple hours here. Before that signifies to me that we're ready to go sweep the highs. And what do I mean by sweeping the highs? Up here are our local highs. Right, here's our first. We have another one here. We have a little lower highs here. We have another one here. As you see, this one's lower than all of those. And I doubt that's it. Honestly, I doubt that's it. I think we may sweep the highs again. To this level is likely. Um... To this level, I would give about a 60% chance. I would give this level probably an 80% chance. Um, I don't know if we get all the way up here and, and bump this. That's probably 50-50 at best. Uh, if we bump that level, um, it's likely to continue going from there. But I need to see it break this trend line to prove it. You don't see where this trend line comes from. I'll show you real fast. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat's a little itchy. All right. Right there's my trend line coming back from Wednesday uh, at about 1,600 hours and riding up. And as you see, she dipped under the trend. She gave her a little kiss right here on the backside, and uh, she hasn't recovered since. It's kind of moving sideways uh, since then. A test of the highs isn't unheard of. If we break over this and get back over this trend, get back over the top there and can close and hold, it's possible we run up to 25,000. 25,000 is the level I spoke on um, the other day on the live stream. 25,000 is right around that point up there. Would that line up cyclically and would that line up mathematically? Well, let's take a look, shall we? So if we're breaking now, let's say we're breaking the trend now, but we haven't yet. It's right on the edge of doing so. Let's say we break the trend now. As you see, 24,909 is a key level right there. Uh, back to the top of that, that would give us until February 3rd or 4th to complete. That put us at 25,000, roughly, right about where the weekly 200 MA is sitting. And I'll show you that once more here. You see the little green mark that I made right there, yeah? That little green blob right here. We put the weekly moving averages up there. Dead ass right where the 200 moving average is. So. I think there may be one more leg left here uh, on Bitcoin before we get a retrace. Or do we get a retrace first and then we get this final leg up here? I don't really know. Uh, but it does look as though that 200 moving average wants to get hit. This current weekly candle is a bit of a hanging man. If you don't know what a hanging man candle formation is, you can Google that. Whenever you get done with this stream here, it'll kind of tell you what a hanging man formation is. Um, 
If it sound, how does it sound to you? It sounds like the trend may be dying. It's a hanging man. All right, so uh, on top of that, hang, if you ever played the game Hangman, on top of that Hangman, you start drawing the rest of the body, it all goes down. It doesn't go up from there, okay? And that's kind of what's forming right here. So, again, we could be getting the handle to the cup and handle. Here being the cup. Here being the handle. And a right up. Does it have to be exactly like that? No, it does not. It could form out a little differently. Here's your cup. Here's your handle. Ride back to support, and then let's ride up. I've got no problem at all with that. I think that's a logical uh, assumption that very well could happen. Also, it could just get pure up from here. However, it's kind of showing it doesn't want to do that. We're basically right back to the levels where we started at. Oh, uh, shit, I clicked on 15 seconds, my bad. Uh, we're basically right back to the point we started at before all the news and stuff dropped. Whole bunch of nothing so far. Big nothing burger. Uh, again, I shared a little thing over there on Twitter that said, well, I guess I cleared your stops out. So <laughs> that's exactly what seems to have happened. Uh, he just wiped out a bunch of stop losses, and here we are. So uh, we're going to look over some different charts here in a second. Just wanted to keep you updated on how this works and why it does what it does. Um, what's up, uh, Flo? What's up? Uh, what's up, Ray? Big Jeff, what's up? Shep Stacks. Minimal Mayhem, what's up, brother? Good to see you. I saw you over here before. Good to see you. Um, Fulvio, Fulvio, maybe I said that wrong or right. Uh, what's up, brother? Good to see you. So, yesterday I didn't get to it. Someone asked me to look at CRV. So, let's go have a gander over at Curve. All right. So, I'm seeing a bit of bearishness here finally on Curve. Uh, if you see all the indicators here, RSI has rolled over from extremely overbought and it started to pull back down. It's tickling the previous level uh, that it spiked up to back here in October. All right. It could get hung up here for a bit, but a decent level to look for would be 50 on the RSI or 40, uh, anywhere between those two ranges. So I'll draw a box here for you where I think it may hit. Right about there. All right, once it hits that level, we may get another run up. Hard to say for sure, just monitoring closely at this time. Uh, it had a hell of a run, and I'm, I marked this bottom, and I missed this bottom by about a percent, like an idiot. That's why sometimes you don't need to argue over small spilled milk. Just take what you can get. Uh, MACD over here looks horrible, though. And like I said, this may jog sideways and down for a bit and let this MACD reset. After the MACD resets, you may get more up, right? Fully possible. Fully possible. But that's speculative. No point in doing that yet. We're rolling over and playing dead at the, at the moment. Uh, 821 EMA. Ah, shit. My bad. Let me grab this. You're dead in between the two in the wait a minute zone. Uh, if you don't understand what the wait a minute zone is, I want you to go watch an episode of Martin from the 90s. I used to love watching Martin. Martin. I used to love Martin. Um, anyway, Shanae lived across the hall from Martin and she used to say all the time, wait a minute, she'd scream it at him. And, uh, that zone is in between the eight and the 21 EMA, the, the green and the purple line that you see on the screen right there. Uh, if you would like to get the eight and 21 EMA on your screen, just type on indicators right here, click on it and then type in eight EMA and you'll get options. There are multiple options. You can pick the one you'd like. You can also do eight comma 13 comma 21 and there's there's three of them now 13 ema is more for forex because you're going to get a lot less volatility there um but 8 and 21 ema is a solid strategy for anyone who's trying to find something to do that that works better for them i have videos on it you can click down low on the video links and find that you know what here close your eyes it's gonna be bright sorry i'll grab this copy and I'll post it right here in the chat. Paste. There's instructional videos for you to watch. I have a video series about how this particular indicator works. It's fairly easy. But a settle back on the 200 moving average here would be excellent. I'd like to see it sit on this 200 right here and hold on to it. If you don't know what the 200 moving average is, there's also a playlist, a video in that playlist there that speaks about the 200 moving average. It's essentially a big strong magnet on the chart that acts like support and resistance. 
As you see, we breached it right here and broke through it. Very good. Now that we've gotten over it, we'd like to see it sit on it and hang on, not fall below it. Okay, we don't want to see it come down here below the 200. We'd like to see it sit on top and bounce around for a bit before we break out and go north. That would be an ideal situation for CRV. Um, what are the options as far as failure goes? Well, you dip under this 200 moving average and you close a couple, couple candles under here, you're risking a far greater pullback. A far greater pullback would lead you down the road of 83 cents, 75 cents, 68 cents. That's not a guarantee, though. That would have to be a pretty gnarly pullback for Bitcoin to do that. Um, that's a long way down. So I don't see that necessarily, particularly right now. We'll have to watch and see. I kind of lean toward this move happening right here where we jog sideways and break out of this. Again, I've given you both scenarios, though. Let's watch and see. Um, my dog's asleep. She's over here. She's over here dreaming and she's growling and kicking and shit. <laughs> she's such a knucklehead. <laughs> Bless her heart. She's sugar sweet. She's never bit anybody. She's got not a mean bone in her body. She only wants to be loved on constantly. Y'all, if you haven't done so, 62 people on, 46 like, boom, go punch the like button. That's so stupid. Uh, go hit like. It's free. They don't cost anything here. And the more we get, the more people watch, man. I want to see as many people on here as I can help as possible. Um, what's up, Danny Deep Pockets? Good to see you, brother. Uh, Ibajo, what's up? Good to see you. Blitz says engine. All right, let's do that. And we'll also look at FTM and AVAX. Let's do engine first. All right, NJ. Injective, injected protocol. My bad. I said engine. You're talking about injective protocol. All right. Yep. Making an excellent run here. Um, it looks as though it's already breached that other high. And I bet you if we look back here, we've breached the trend. And it looks like we have. Look at that move right there. Goodness gracious, y'all. Shoo wee. That's pretty. All right. Let's grab our overall trend here. Pull our fib. You see we breached 382. It looks like we're heading for $4.12-ish on injective protocol. See that? That's where our resistance level is right here. We've got a little bit. Let me take this 821 EMA off. You can see we've got a little bit of resistance right here that may give us a hiccup. And we got some more back here. So anywhere in this area, let me draw this box down a little more, about right there. So in, anywhere between 370 and 420 is a great spot to look for a hold up area here. Again, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Just some idiot on the internet. I do charts for a living. This is what I do. I do not have a regular job. I only do this full time, folks. I sit right here in this office for at least 10 or 12 hours a day, either doing charts or talking to you guys. Okay. I don't. I used to do industrial HVAC for almost 20 years. I did that. I was able to trade my way out of that madness, and I plan on keeping it that way. Okay. You don't get there by guessing or being a DJ. All right. So um, that's my look on injective protocol here. Let's look at FTM. I believe she's finally taking a break. I think. Yeah, so same situation where it's sitting over 382, pointing toward the 50. <sighs> right now it's trying to reclaim that 382. It's kind of getting rejected a little bit. I know that's small and you can't really see it. There you go. It's trying to reject that 382 fib. Um, I'd prefer if it didn't. I'd prefer if it held on to that and gave us another leg up. Look at some of our indicators. RSI been screaming high for uh, weeks now. Still hasn't failed, which is incredible. Uh, MACD, listen, talked about this last night, about as sky high and as up as it can get. <laughs> when this finally breaks trend, it's going to run back to the yellow line, and then we'll test that yellow line and see what happens. That's about as far as I can go with it. It's not a sale yet, unbelievably. It's still over the 821. Even though everything is running sky high, you don't have a sell signal yet. I mean, you can take profits a little bit if you want, but you don't have a full-on sell signal which is insane, isn't it? Just keeps going. Um, AVAX. All right. AVAX, similar situation where it's riding the trend line. It's actually rejecting off of it right now. You see it tried to fail. Let me zoom in here where you can see. It tried to fail through a wick down there. 
threw a wick right to the trend line and now pulled back up a little bit. So we have a couple options. We either reclaim this white line and stay above this trend line or we reject, dip our toes under the trend line and roll back down here to support. First support is going to be down here at about 17, 18 bucks, which isn't far from where we're at now, huh? Um, next support after that, all the way down here at like 15 bucks, 15, 16 bucks. Um, right now, that looks less likely than more likely. I believe you're probably going to hang on to this trend for the time being. Going to continue this streak that you have going, and until this trend line fails, it's all good. Ethereum now, it's a little bit different story. Uh, looking back here, I've got some historic lines drawn here on the chart if you're wondering what the vertical lines are. This is our trend line that we have yet to break. If you were in linear mode, you couldn't see this. All right? You couldn't see this because linear mode wouldn't have shown you this. However, Ethereum is smacking dead on this uh, trend line right here and has yet to breach it. Sitting right underneath it, boiling, building a bull flag, but hasn't broken yet. As you see, RSI has come down. This is what I was talking about, the 50 area. Hasn't quite gotten there yet. All right, if it gets to this 50 area, likely an opportunity to scale in abides there. Um, similar situation on the MACD. She's already rolled over and pulled back. This may continue to drive down and sideways for a bit. While it resets, the price may just sit here and do nothing. Um, now, the difference here is on the 8 and 21 EMA, you see we've dipped in between the middle of them where FTM, it was over all of this. Well, you know, Ethereum is not. It's kind of sitting there in between in the wait a minute zone trying to figure out what it wants to do. So literally, we just wait a minute. That's what it's there for. Don't freak out. Give it some time. Um, all right. Um, let's see. Uh, Keith looks like it's hit a spot hit by spotlight when the website comes. Yeah, I know, dude. That YouTube is in, in light mode. No matter whether I save it in dark mode or not, it goes whenever I turn it on. I know it hurts your guys' eyes too. Um, Tesla, yeah, let's look at Tesla real fast, and I'll try to go down the list here. Tesla still fighting back after getting rejected off of resistance right there. See that resistance line? Got rejected perfectly. That just happened to line up with the 50 fib. I think we may take a stab at the 200 moving average up here. You have more resistance at around 199 or 200. That may be where the 200 moving average comes down to by the time price meets it. Go share this around for all your extremely left-leaning hater friends because they absolutely hate Tesla now because Elon bought it. Elon bought Twitter, and now they hate Elon. But they love his cars. So, you know, but they hate Tesla. It's a wild world, folks. <laughs> it's a wild world. That's why I don't do politics. That's why I don't do politics. Uh, either way, Tesla's still showing up here. RSI did go overbought, but is starting to reset. If, you, uh, if you'll notice here, uh, it went up and hit overbought, but this may continue to do this and drive up. You haven't broken divergence yet. Once this cracks, you know, you might get more down, but not until then. It looks, like, it looks all right right now. It might be good to the end of the week. Might be good to the end of the week. Um, all right. Let's have a gander at sand and mana. Yeah, man, you know, these were big hitters that I had marked out, and they did not work out for me at all, so I've already ditched this one. I need to erase this by line. I've already ditched that one and cut cut tail. Um, this one's in between the 821 and that wait-a-minute zone. As you see, it broke this. Move this stuff out of the way and take some stuff off this chart. Let's look cleaner. It had this yellow uptrend line right here. She broke that yellow uptrend line. As you see, jogged sideways, gave it a little bit of a back test, and now it's pulled down, and it's got another trend line right now that's kind of dancing around on top of. This was a super low time frame, though, like an hour. Uh, I imagine this jogs down into the right a little bit and resets and takes another run up. I can't be for sure on that. But, again, I'm waiting for resets on kind of everything here. I got this level marked out because it's a Fibonacci level. That Fibonacci level is roughly 50 all right, and that's not a real number. It's just halfway, essentially, but that's 0.566, about 0.57, about 0.55 for sand there, where I'll look to scale in if I get an opportunity to. Um, I think that'll be the best spot I get. That's what I'm looking for. 
Um, I missed the bottom, right? I called the bottom and then missed it by a quarter of a percent like an idiot. Uh, that's what I get. Should have just bought it down there when I saw it. But it's all good. Sometimes I'm better at charts than I am at buying and selling. That's just part of the game, yeah? Whatever. Uh, mana, which is the central land. All right, this one had a hell of a run, and it's still not over yet. Um, you could argue that this trend is still valid here and that it's still running and hasn't failed. Um, all your indicators are starting to roll over. Like, look at that. That MACD looks bad, right? But it also, at the same time, it's went up in this period where it was a little ugly. It went up in price. RSI trying to reset, trying to come down, hasn't gotten there yet. May run down to the 50. Um, let's remove this trend line. We can clearly see that. Uh, 821 EMA, you haven't broken the 8 yet. So technically, you have no sale. You see I'm still in this one, my green line. All right, we'll see what happens. Not sold on this one breaking and failing yet. One step at a time. Um, ENQ, bro, Anisium. I ain't seen Anisium in a minute. Remember, remember the stream that originally brought you ENQ. This is back from 2019 when we talked about this. Everyone else who piled in after that is a coattail writer. If you're a live streamer and you start talking about ENQ, like you found it, you're full of shit. I looked on YouTube before I did that video in 2019, and I couldn't find nothing on Enesium or ENQ. Nothing. Nothing. Till we did that stream back in 2019, in October of 2019, nothing on YouTube existed about it. So I actually did my, did my own research beforehand. Thank you, Goombas, for bringing this coin up, by the way. Um, but either way, you're sitting over the 200, bouncing around. It hasn't quite failed yet, but looks like it wants to. Uh, if you get a failure of this 200, you may get a trend line back test, and it may be over and tapping out. Um, you know, it made a hell of a run back in October 22. Look at that. Made a hell of a run in 22, and this has been a hell of a bear market, and it hasn't quite recovered yet. So, um you know, walk softly here. It may be, it may be more nastiness ahead. Um, it's sitting on top of the 200 like that's not bad, but you know, some of these, some of these hardcore altcoins like this may not go as far as you want them to go. I'll put it that way. They may do a lot less than you want them to do, and that sucks. But that's just the way it is. Um, I don't hate trying to buy this on the 200. Just be careful. Set a stop loss. May fail though. Looks like it wants to. Looks like it wants to. Um, Algo. Got a couple more here, then we'll be done. So it's only 30 minutes on Wednesdays. Um, Bitcoin's right back where it was before the stream ever happened. Fucking news, people, dude. Everyone gets all worked up about something that doesn't matter. All right. Um, so again, but in between the 821 EMA, wait a minute zone here for Algo. You did break this trend. I don't like that look. See that broken trend? Now you're pointing toward the 200 moving average on the four hour. That's down here about 21 cents. At the moment, that may change and shift. Uh, you know, you are hitting some support here. It may get hung up right here in support and not drop any lower and then make another move up. This one's lagged out compared to most. Uh, we'll see. I'll be looking to add to my Algorand. I have a little bit of this, um, but I scaled out some. I'll be looking to add to my Algorand. If it breaks this trend line, when it breaks this trend line, I'll look to re-add some Algorand and uh, ride this up a bit. Makes sense. That's on a four hour also, not even daily. Um, so, you know, one step at a time, folks. Don't get over your head. Don't get over your head. Um, Multiback, MTV, bro. I want my MTV. Bought MTV the other day. I don't know if I told everybody I bought it or not. Uh, I just a shitter. I didn't buy much of it. Two hundred fifty dollars worth. Um, however many coins that gets me, I don't know. I'm not gonna issue a hundred thousand coin challenge. I'm not gonna do that dumb shit. That's stupid. Uh, what I will say is, you're over the two hundred moving average. You're still sitting over the eight. It's really, really close to failing the eight EMA though. Really, really close. Uh, it's actually kind of in the wait a minute zone. I take that back. So it looks like it's either gonna go sideways or down and tag this trend line. We'll see if we fail it. We'll ride or die with that trend line right there. 
Uh, you know, it hasn't gotten up to certain levels that other ones have, which is around 236. Multiple coins have gone to 236 or better. And here's a good example of that, Hydra. Getting close to that 236, she's broken everything, broken the 200 moving average, we're running up. CWS, similar situation, up to the 236 line, it stopped dead ass on it. So I know my fibs are accurate. It's awesome to be able to see. Now, I'll say this, these fibs run out February 12th. That's when this trend runs out on this particular coin and many others if you go check the coins. So this one may stop by then and not go up anymore. I'm watching very carefully because of that, all right? May stop and fall out. A lot of these shitters may stop and fall out at that point. I'll be watching. Um, all right, we got a couple more. Yeah, LDO. Now, what was another one someone mentioned? Yeah, LDO, Lido. <clears throat> all right. Lido did really, really well compared to most. Um, this doesn't have as much data. Kind of looks like APT in a sense. Uh, this one doesn't. This one runs out February 27th or 8th. This may last out a little bit, a little bit longer than others. Um, I say that. Let me tighten this up a bit here. Yeah, never mind. It could be running out now. Um, let's pull a fib in the other direction. Let's pull it in this direction here. All right, you're flirting with two two thirty six right now. If this can't hold two dollars and fifteen cents, then we're aimed toward this three eighty two line right here at around one dollar eighty one cents. And the two hundred moving average I see is starting to make an appearance right here. I'd look for a two hundred moving average touch if it cannot hold two dollars and fifteen cents on LDO. Osmo, Osmo, be the last one, y'all. We're already two minutes over. And then we'll skate out of here. I uh, don't have a ton of data on Osmo. Yeah, not much data. Hard to read a chart without a lot of data. Um, let me pull up Coin Trader here and see if I can't find more. Let me see what I can find here. All right, here's Osmo. Yeah, there's some more data. My goodness. Yeah, this thing had an awful bear market, didn't it? Just got punished. Got punished. Now, the good news is it's broken trend and it's still moving up. And I think there's a solid possibility. You've got you've got till get February 28th for this to move up to about a dollar 31 cents. And I feel like it's got the possibility to do so. Um, we look back over here. We're over the eight EMA and the 21 EMA. I said, what price did I just now? One dollar 31 cents. Yeah, that makes sense up to here. Uh, I think that's possible. Uh, and these wicks are a little bit odd, so I wouldn't count them too much. Uh, I think it's possible it does get to that 131 level, and then we'll see from there how long it can chop out and last. All right? So thank you all for being here. This is this is badass. We had a lot of people in here, and that's awesome. I appreciate every single one of you coming in here, all right? We got a question and answer that's going to happen over in the Discord now, over in the events section. You'll see it in the subscriber video room. Jump over there, ask all the questions you feel free to ask. We'll do it for until people question until the questions run out. How about that. Uh, thank you all. I'll see you guys tomorrow, 11 p.m. Our normal Friday, normal Thursday night live stream. Be ready. We're going hardcore for hours. We'll go for one hour on the live stream, and then we'll have a Zoom after that shall last hours. <laughs> I'll leave you guys with this. Make the best of your todays, the worst of your tomorrows. That's Jay-Z who said that. And in the words of Notorious B.I.G., you could have been anywhere in the world. You chose to be here with me. I appreciate that more than y'all can realize. Thank you. See y'all on the next live stream. Sky's the limit. Peace.